Alright guys, today I'm going to carry you through my first uh, documented project. Um, so, on my channel you'll see I had a video where I built the wasteboard for my X-Car. I was trying to save save some money, I think yeah, I saved about 80, 80 US dollars, so about a hundred and something Canadian dollars. Um, so, right now we're in my bedroom and it just so happens to be my maker space because all I really have in my college house is a shed in the backyard it is insulated but uh, today is about negative 15 degrees Celsius so it's pretty cold and I don't want to go outside um, I also keep my CNC in my room most of the time because there's a mouse in the shed and there's wires on my CNC I mean the two don't go together uh, also, uh, it is aluminium, it is cold, there's uh, no ductile to brittle transition for aluminium, but I still don't want the contractions and whatnot in my, in my metal, I mean, I gotta go up there and I'll heat it up and I'm going from negative 15 up to positives, I mean, I don't know really too much how effect that is, but I think it's best to keep in my room. Now the problem with that is it throws chips everywhere. I try not to cut any MDF because I don't want any of the chemicals or fine dust. So I've been cutting cutting boards, polypropylene cutting boards. But they throw plastic chips everywhere. So today I'm going to carry you through my dust collection system. And what I've done so far is, let me show you. Let me see if I can turn this camera around for you guys. Nope. I can't. I'm already filming. Alright, so right here is a clamp. And I've built this so far. Uh, you'll get to see the CAD version. Uh, I think I have some time lapse footage of me cutting it on the CNC. Now, my plan with this is I've wanted to make my CNC fully isolated from the auxiliary components. So I want to be able to take it off the electrical components and I want to be able to disconnect the vacuums when I have to move the machine so that I can take it all apart move it quickly put it back together so my plan is is to be able to disconnect from right here all right and I'm gonna run a permanent hose that runs along my drag chain and it's gonna go right to my dust shoe uh, so you're gonna get to watch me cat it so I'm gonna cat it in Fusion 360 because it allows me to make the uh, cam for it right there. I don't have any other cam software that I can use unless I'm at school, which I don't really know how that cam software works. Uh, I could SolidWorks it. I'm a lot better with SolidWorks, but Fusion's what a lot of people out there are using right now, so that's kind of what I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna try and talk you through it, and I'll give you a little intro to Chili Pepper, which is the controller for the CNC that I'm using now. Cause it's a little more powerful than easel from Venables. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. Okay. This is a polypropylene cutting board that I picked up at the dollar store. Um side note, I don't have a car. And the Home Depot is really far and the Canadian tire doesn't really sell much materials besides bolts and rods and stuff like that. So a lot of my materials I buy in small quantities at the dollar store. So that includes kit clipboards, anything that's like plastic, like cutting boards, they're great. This is polypropylene, it's good rigid, I figured out the right cutting speeds for it and it makes a beautiful part. This is what I'm going to make the dust show, I, I think I said that already. Anyway, so what I like to do is I like to get my constraining measurements. So I'll get the thickness of the stock and I will, let me show you this distance from this side to this side will be a constraining measurement because I don't want to lose any travel um, I'm still yet to decide if to put the hose on the side or in front of the spindle uh, I might drop two CAD models and see which one I prefer I, I like things to look aesthetically nice um, and whichever one's a little more rigid. I also want to be able to slide it out so I can change the bit. So there will be a slitted groove. I haven't yet decided what I want to make my skirt out of. So 
That won't be in the video today, but if you have a good idea that's easy to put together, put it in the comments, please. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get started. I'm going to film the cutting process. I'll probably... Um, I'll probably time lapse it for you guys so, because it can be boring. And then I will show you the features that I've put on. And I will go through a short demo. I might do that in an alternate video that's specifically for the cam. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to get started and I will show you soon.
Okay, so I just finished cutting out the dust shoe. Uh, I'm going to put the holes for fastening the skirting on after. I'll do that by hand after I decide exactly how I want to do it. I was thinking maybe some kind of fabric and I'll pop rivet at certain points. I, I don't know yet. But anyway, here's the part. It didn't cut perfectly. I mean, it was pretty good. I just didn't get the depth. So I had to go with the exacto knife and I had to, to follow on and I had to cut off very thin plastic. It was probably 0.2 of a millimeter, if that thick. But we got a little recess here and the hole for the adapter. Now, this adapter was a. I guess this is a connector. So it's the exact same size. I cut it off. There's the, the lip and the recess, and it fits in tight. So I'm going to like put it in permanently with CA glue. And that is the solid part of our dust shoe. So I've got this spar. This is just the main idea of the dust collector. This is actually going to screw on to the end. I just have it there hooking right now. I'm going to cut that off and screw it on. It fits right here. All right. And this just connects on there, runs around. I couldn't make it any shorter. I was kind of limited to the sections of the holes that had this kind of texture on it to cut. So. The holes will be longer than I wanted it, but oh well. And then this end of the hose is going to run to my cyclone separator and then from my cyclone separator to my vacuum.